Hello again. So I was asked by, by my cousin, what is her guardian? But I couldn't tell and I showed her your channel. She tried meditation and actually a guardian showed up, but we don't know what it is. So my cousin doubts if it was just imagination. She is questioning me. If all of this really is real, I want to give her time to have a thing to try and connect. I don't want her to go through the same doubts I had. I don't want her to doubt herself to get bruised. I want the pain. Um, your human body not being able to escape this reality. Maybe I'm just very protected. I always was like towards uh, like that towards her. Thanks for this video. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to answer this comment today. To answer that question, my dear friend, we must go through this topic, uh, which is how to discern what's real and what's not. And how can you tell, with or without a psychic ability, if something that you feel or see within a, a meditation session or a vision or anything that you doubt is real or not, how you, can you tell actually that it's real or not? And this is what we're going to discuss about. Now, I'm pretty sure you don't want to enter into this huge matrix conspiracy theory that no one cares about, that it's probably far-fetched anyway, but... And also very misunderstood, because it's way too complex, and... Um, things are not what they seem to be, that's true. But what you have to understand is, what's real and what's not real is a matter of perspective, just like René Descartes said one day, I think, so I am. You know, so like existence is just really a concept, um, a perspective from somebody, uh, a perception of uh, how you perceive your own reality. So it can be through the five senses, so the touch, the hearing, the stuff. It can be through that intuition that uh, people call the third eye or whatever you want to call. Now, the only thing that is proven um, scientifically is that the soul can actually live on um, after death uh, for a few hours, a few, even even more, like a, a few hours, a few days, a few minutes, but there's a way to bring back uh, the soul into the body because the brain's activity and the brain cells do not die instantly. They take hours to die and there, therefore there's um, a time in which the soul is out of the body and persists after death, which is kind of crazy because uh, clinically, uh, the heart dies and the person dies, right? But there's still like brain cells active in the brain that are slowly, slowly dying and stuff. But it's also possible to bring them back. And a lot of people who have uh, had near-death experiences have concluded um, a study with uh, other scientists, and like they've come to the conclusion that at least 20% of these person had like the same similar experiences of seeing lights uh, uh, and uh, tunnels and a sense of peace and it it proved uh, also that it improved their lives afterward that they really like they started to change personality and give more love to people more help spend more time with people and just this this scientific study proved that our soul is like we are not what we think we are we're not just like a 3d vessel and that's it after death. And that's gonna piss off some atheists, because even when science can actually prove that these things are real, it's like, it's gonna piss off some people, <laughs> trust me. That's why I have to say, it's okay to question reality and what is and what is not and what's real and what's not. It's totally normal, guys. Like, if you were not questioning this, you could be harming yourself with false beliefs and, and things that could harm you in the long term. It's, it's, it's just like a natural defense from the body or the mind, if you want to say so, to protect yourself against false beliefs and harm and self-harm. So it's very important question to question once in a while if what you're going through is real or not. And it's just healthy, in my opinion. So please, atheists, don't come at me and like, oh, okay, I don't, no, no, just don't. I respect everyone's ideal, and I am not someone who follows any religion. I'm someone who works with all and no religions at all. I believe that all religion systems have a part of truth. Uh, that everything is like pretty much real in what they say, but they all use different words to say the same fucking concepts and designation. So for me, it's not really relevant. So the way I see it with my rational scientific mind, I try to investigate this myself a bit like René Descartes did, like left school and try to learn life for himself.
I'm trying to push the limits of what's real and what's not and see where, how far my soul can actually go and free itself from this reality. So that makes me come back to your comment. Now the question if the body really dies, where does the soul go? Is it free after death? That's what we don't know about. We just know that our DNA um, strands are basically made of atoms, which are basically made of light. <laughs> and um, uh, basically no scientist know what's like holding these cells together, these, these atoms together. It is like a mysterious force scientists cannot put their... Uh, they just cannot put their finger on it, so my guess is that Mysterious Force still holds our um, energy cells, our atoms together after death, and it creates what it calls, what, what, is, what is called an etheric body or astral body. And now the question is, how far can this astral projection go? Like, how far can you use your soul to actually visit other realms or even go in heaven or hell, whatever your system, your belief system is? Uh, how far can it go? And does the body need to be alive? I believe not. And where's the limit, really? Like, what's real, what's not? You know, where, where are the limits? So that's what I'm trying to investigate. And so far, you can lucid dream, astral project, visit other realms, other dimensions. You can pretty much do anything, even like quantum jump and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm still testing those things, but I'm pretty sure they're real, because I've experienced some crazy stuff in my life, and I can pretty much say, yes, there's, there's something after death, there's something outside this physical body that does not rely on a physical vessel. And when people meditate, they reach what we call this uh, meditative, meditative state, or this void state that you can actually reach or even lucid dreaming, or even dreams. And all of these are meditative states of mind in which you can uh, tap into your subconscious mind in a way or another, uh, whether you sleep or not. And you have to know that we, as humans, uh, have been like brainwashed from birth to not believe all kind of like supernatural stuff. And therefore, it's very hard to override these intrusive thoughts that comes in whether it's within the day or med during meditation and those voices are so annoying because they're like oh i'm doubting oh this is not real and this is blocking you and you come to believe you have like intrusive thoughts uh, of things that you're gonna tell yourself that it's not real or you're gonna make s some things up in your mind but now how do you know these things are real or not like example you do a meditation and you hear a voice or you see a, some kind of spirit guide or angel talking to you. How can you tell that this entity is real or not? I will tell you, okay? The, it is very more, much more simple than what you thought. So whether it's an angel, a dragon or any type of entity, it can come from a deceased person or even from another realm, another planet. It could be an alien, it could be anything, okay? How can you tell that this voice you hear like during meditative state is real indeed? And the answer is your feelings. So you know that odd feeling that you have when you feel a ghost or an entity into your house? Like you feel like you're stared at or followed or stalked and there's a ghost like beside you? It's the, it's the same kind of feeling. It's all about emotions and tensions. When you encounter an entity, in whatever states you are, you're, go you're going to feel a change in the energy, in the emotions that might even not be yours and that might be recognizable by you. While uh, intrusive thoughts and voices you make up in your mind are more chaotic, chaotic impulsive, uh, lacking sense, um, it, it sounds like things you would say to yourself and uh, the feelings you're gonna feel, there's gonna be like a guilt behind it or some kind of like, oh, I've, I'm pretty sure I influence that thoughts. You're gonna know when something feels like it's someone else because it's gonna feel like someone else. It's gonna feel like this ghost presence. So stay tuned and good luck with that. I'm gonna do some other video to help you with that.